Hey guys, my name is Albert and in this video over here, what I'd like to show you is an issue that we currently have inside of Autodesk Inventor. Maybe it's not an issue, just like, I'm just trying to figure out a different way of actually getting this done. So let's say for example, you've got a part. So I'm just gonna use the right plane to draw this object. And this is just one line at the top, one line at the right, one line at the bottom. And I'm gonna use a dimension tool to give this a total height of a thousand then this little line over here i'll make this 100 this little line of mine and in this case i'll say equals the top and the bottom we'll say coincidence constraint and we'll say this point must be coincidence to this point now in this case here our vertical line is coincidence to that middle point there and we'll see in the very bottom right here it says fully constrained fantastic the length of this line is 100 and this is equal to there perfect the next thing i'll do here is i'm going to add in two points and these points over here are going to function as our bottom and our top points that we're going to be adjusting later on. So I use this point tool and to this line here, this distance, I'm going to call it top underscore width is equal to 100, enter. Then this guy over here, I'll add in dimension again. I'll say bottom underscore width is equal to 100 as well, enter. Now we've got these two dimensions that are holding that in place. Then I'm going to use a dimension tool from the top line to this point over here. I'll place this dimension. I'll select this vertical line here, this 1000 long line. And I'm going to say divide by four, enter. That's going to make it go down a quarter of the way. Then I'll make the same distance here at the very bottom. I'll select this line here. I'll say divide by four as well, which will make this 250 and 250. So if we adjust this length to be 1500, boom, both of those values update. Absolutely fantastic. Oh no, I messed up my numbers. We'll say finish sketch. Uh, actually, we're not gonna say finish sketch just yet. I'm too excited. What we'll do here is we'll go over and we'll use the spline tool. So spline interpolation. We'll make a point here, another point here, another point over here, and another point down here. You don't have to do this. You could actually just use um, the uh, these freeform tools to modify a surface. But in this case, I actually want to use a dimension so we can make this fully parametric. So this is our first start of our object. Then I'm gonna go over to select the sketch. I'll right click, I'll say copy. I'll go to my origin folder. And because this plane has been offset a bit to the right. Oh no, it's not offset. I thought it was offset. So in this case here, because my plane is actually drawn on the X, Y, what I'll do is I'll say plane tool. I'll pick this Y, Z plane. I'll drag it back. This distance, I'll make it negative 500. Then I'll press space bar. I'll select that Y, Z plane again. I'll drag it forward, 500. Perfecto. Now in this case here, we might want to actually give these two parameters a width. So maybe I'll just call this um, uh, left side, left underscore side enter and then this guy here will be right underscore oh no that's a negative sorry so this will be left underscore side oh no oh how annoying geez right underscore side and if you're struggling to find where this is it's just this little button here at the very top fx and this is just left underscore side there we go Perfecto. The reason I've, do, I've done that is just so that it's actually all named, right? And now if we ever modify these values over here to let's say a thousand enter, you'll see that the right hand side also updates to a thousand. It's very difficult to see that faint yellow line. Um, but yeah, very nice, very cool. Let me just undo that because I don't have to worry too much about that. So let's copy our sketch again and we'll paste it on the work plane on the left and we'll paste this on the work plane on the right. And then you might ask yourself, okay, well, Albert, why did we do that? In this case here, we did it so that we can actually go through and modify some of these existing dimensions. Let me just double click on this because I see it's still using a thousand. I'll drop it down to 500. But now in this case over here, what we can do is if I double click on this 100 and I make it 120, you see this goes forward. If I go down here, I make this 50, that goes inward. If this guy here is set to 50, that goes in and if this guy here is set to 150, that pops out. And then the next thing we'll do over here is the same thing on that side there. Very nice, very cool. Let's go 
one fifty. Oh no! Oh no! One thirty. There we go. And then maybe seventy. And now we've created a parametric shape, and then we can just go through and use the loft tool. And we can loft in between each one of these profiles. Profile one, profile two, profile three. So okay. Boom. That is your uncle, Bob. <laughs> in this case over here. If you're not really happy with that surface, you could always go through, add in more of these planes here. You could always go through, increase maybe the distances here to make it a bit more exaggerated. And in that case, so that's gonna give us a lot of depth in terms of our surface. It's kind of difficult to see. So let's just change the material here to something that's gonna be easier for us to see, like wood. Because that's gonna allow us to follow the grain with our eyes. I think I'll use cherry. Oh no, I don't like cherry. Oak, yeah. This oak, very nice, very cool. But in that case here, you can see we've got a lot of control over the particular shapes that we're using. And this will then allow you to create very, very interesting pieces of geometry. So now, in this case here, I don't really want it to be that exaggerated. That's why I actually use dimensions instead of just um, cooking it up using the freeform tools. Obviously, they also have dimensions, but it's a lot easier this way. I'll show you guys in the next video how to use freeform tools. We'll say start 2D sketch. We'll pick the bottom face. And in this case here, we'll just go through and we'll use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle that goes from the bottom going up. This height will be 20. Um, actually, the width will be 20 and this height will be 200. Enter, just so it's a lot taller than this initial shape. Then in this case, here, I'll say dimension tool. I'll measure from this edge to this edge going down to the bottom. It's gonna give me some type of number. I'll pick the measure option, measure, from through this flyout, measure, pick the bottom edge. This gives me a thousand and a thousand divided by 20 is equal to 50. Ah, a thousand, let's actually go 25. So let's go divide by 40. That gives us 25. The top is 20, this is 25. Very nice, very cool. So if you say rectangular pattern, oopsie, let's go finish sketch before we get too excited. And finish sketch, we'll say extrude tool at the very top inside the 3D tab. We'll say through all. And this through all button, I'm gonna zoom in for you, just in case you can't see. But this through all button right here, this allows you to cut through all of your geometry. So if you say extrude, we've got just this rectangle here by itself. And in that case, if you go here and we say extrude cut, and we say through all, and then we go down here and say, okay, this will then generate a cut that runs all the way through our geometry. Absolutely fantastic. Now, if you say rectangular pattern and we pick that cut there and we say direction is to the right, and the spacing between each item is gonna be double that of 20, so we'll make it 40, and we'll flip its direction to the other side. And in this case here, yeah, I'll probably just eyeball this. I'll probably start off by making 20 of them, 22. You could obviously use like a mathematical formula to drive this, but in this case, yeah, I'll just make it as long as it needs to be. And obviously, it's gonna go through and break our hearts because you might say to yourself, well, Albert, uh, I'm so glad we did those cuts, but why did they end up like this? Well, my friend, the reason they ended up like this is because if we double click on this rectangular pattern, we can pop open this little menu here, this more button. Inside this more button, it's actually quite common to see this across the menus, but here you'll see this extra options like adjust. So every single time it generates one of these objects over here, it's going to adjust, adjust it instead of using the identical cut across each one. So if we say, okay, that then allows us to then have these cuts running through our geometry. Now, the only thing that just does not make sense to me inside of Autodesk Inventor is the fact that you cannot split this object. It's impossible. And in that case there, you might say, well, Albert, what do you mean we can't split the object? It's already in pieces. It's like, yeah, this is one solid piece because if you pop open the solid bodies, you'll see there's only one single item here. I do have a workaround for this. And in that case there, the workaround that I created is going to be, I love how I don't know what this call oh, it does not work. <laughs> um, para, para. Yeah, it's called para. Para. If you're South African, you'll know. Um, in this case over here, some South Africans will know. Um, in this case over here, you'll see that I've created some piece of geometry 
And in this case, if I right click, say open, it's gonna open up the individual part. If I right click again, uh, I have to just double click on this part of here. It's called part two, there we go. All my parts are called part two, that's why I never know what they're called. Um, in this case here, let me see, let me say, why would you do that? Oh no, oh, I broke it. I just have to get this cut to recut back to where it should be. Because I think um, after the change of geometry, it must have struggled. There we go. Now in this case here, do you notice that inside the solid bodies folder, there are 20 separate items versus inside of this part where there's one solid. And this is very, very problematic because if you try to ever build an assembly, your assembly will not have a bill of material. It's going to show this all as one single part. And plus, on top of that, you will not be able to get the various contours that exist from this particular item. And this is why I think it's so important to actually choose how you want to model. And each workflow that you have will actually bring you to a different location. You'll see in this case here when I created this, this was generated using a couple of surfaces or one surface really with the freeform modification on it. Then I created these extrusions and that extrusion can be patterned multiple times as a separate solid. Then I cut the shape out of the original solid. So in this case here, if I jump back, this is what we have. We've got one solid. We repeat the pattern of that solid. You'll see we've got a surface. Then we go to extrusion and we extrude from the top down, cutting that surface away. Because if you use a split tool, the problem with this tool is it can only accept one surface at a time or it can only accept one face at a time. And this becomes very problematic very quickly. But in this case over here, you'll see that with that extrusion, it actually makes it a lot easier to model. But I'll show you guys how to model something like this in a separate video. But in this video over here, you can see the benefits of actually doing it that way. It's insane, absolutely insane. We can view every single one of these slices. Whereas if you did it any other way, this is just impossible. And maybe you want to save some wood and you don't want to waste so much. Um, I'm not too sure if this is even wasting it. Cutting that inside away is helpful or not, but it might be helpful. Um, so let's go over to this original object. And because these are a pattern of the original, what we could do here is we could use a shell tool to remove the bottom face. And in this case here, I'm not too sure why it's saying what it's saying. Oh, I just have to highlight the rest of these items. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do it like that. I can. If I pop this open, I say thickness. I pick the top. And I make the top thickness thicker than this bottom. 50? I think it's 200 is what I said. I think after the modification, 4. Uh, 430. Oh, no. 130. Albert, just measure, friend, from the top to the bottom. What's so difficult about measuring? I sound like Shane. <laughs> we'll make it 320. We'll say okay. And now, watch this. Hallelujah. It still works. It still works. And this is because this shape is all completely parametric. And depending on how you're modeling this, you all say, well, Albert, that's very thin. It's like, I can hear you. I can hear you shouting in the comment section. Okay, there we go. In this case here, now you can see because it's one single object that we're modifying and then we're repeating that and then we're cutting that thereafter, it makes the biggest difference in the world in terms of how we can actually start working with specific terrain. Maybe this could be um, some type of furniture that you have in this particular space. Then you can definitely go through and create really, really interesting organic shapes. This is no furniture, it will cut you in half. But, <laughs> but in this case here, you'll see that it's very nice, very cool that we can adjust all of this. And yeah, that's basically all I have to say. I'm just really heartbroken the fact that the split tool does not do what I want. You can literally only split one thing at a time. So let's create a plane that runs from this corner to this corner to the point, top point over here. Now let's cut this thing. So if I use the slice tool, um, split tool, I just came out of AutoCAD. So if we just use the split tool, look at this. We can pick this, this surface perfectly fine. Now with these faces over here, it's gonna ask us for faces. I don't wanna split a face into two separate pieces. 
I would rather split a solid. Now if I click through these guys and I hold shift, uh, <laughs> my friend, that's not going to happen. So what you'd actually end up having to do is, let me just pick a surface to cut. Do you want to cut away the top or the bottom? Yeah, I'll cut away the top. So in this case, yeah, I'm just looking at this arrow. One's pointing up, one's pointing down. I'll say apply, and you'll see it actually cuts it. And now I have to repeat the command by picking the plane and this object, apply. And there is no ways I would ever do this for any model. That defeats the whole purpose of using a program like Inventor. You're spending so much money just to do something manually. It's disgusting. So in this case over here, this is just the best way I could figure out um, splitting is not using the split tool, but actually creating separate solids and then cutting them as a pattern. But again, like I said, we will definitely go through these tools. I just wanted you guys to be aware of the fact that there is a reason why I did not use this tool. And if you can find a better way or a better tool to do this, that will be absolutely fantastic. But yeah, in the next video, I'll show you exactly how to sort this chap out and create a nice parametric item. And yeah, also maybe working with some of these freeform tools. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.